Um, but I think that uh, certainly just, just pampering your feet a little bit at the end of the day, especially if you've been on them, elevate your feet certainly can help. Mm -hmm. It feels kind of nice to do that anyway. So We'd yeah. be remiss if we didn't also talk about people with diabetes too. And, Absolutely. And if you're out shopping, it, there's even more... Uh, Sort of, it's even more important to take those shoes off at the end of those th Absolutely. the day and, Absolutely. and really take a good look at your feet yes. and make sure there aren't any sores that you might have missed. Absolutely, before. and and certainly blisters and red spots and hot spots are the beginning potential beginnings of some problems for our diabet diabetics that don't have good feelings. So it's very important that you wear the appropriate socks with no holes. Make sure that when you get home or done with your shopping day, mm -hmm. go ahead and, and take your shoes and socks off and always inspect your feet. That's the message that we really try to get through to our diabetics who don't have good feeling to look at your feet and if you can't reach down and look take a little handheld mirror and uh, and take a look at your feet and just make sure because those little red spots can sometimes lead lead us into some other little problems so just keep an eye on that for mm -hmm. sure as for our diabetics yes you had mentioned some pampering things that we talked about um a lot of women are going to naturally want to get a sort of mani pedi for the holidays sure. and you had Sounds a nice good. you had a you had a nice tip especially for a, a nice gift buying idea too yes. for, for people that have um uh, everything a woman on their <laughs> their shopping list like uh -huh. most of us do um talk a little bit about the importance of having sort of a, your own sort of customized kit well many podiatrists um as well as just even at some of the stores you can pick up uh, at some podiatry offices and uh just at some of the local um uh, bed and bath type stores you can pick up some of your own uh, toenail clipping tools and you can put together a little a little um, kit that you can actually bring with you to the um, manicure mm -hmm. um, salon and if you are concerned about cleanliness or concerned about using other people's equipment or, or, or nail clippers you can certainly bring your own and I think that's a great idea there are um, some products on the market I, I know in my office we sell little pedicure kits that are really nice they kind of are reusable and they close with a little snap and uh, a lot of the um, a lot of the salons are starting to do that actually now anyway they'll keep a little they might even keep them uh, in in the shop for you if you're a regular customer I've mm -hmm. seen that in some of the local salons too so bringing your tools with you can help to potentially protect you from maybe an infection or something that may or may not um, come up or, or you, something you might be concerned about. Yeah, and those infections are very rare, but we do hear about them in the media occasionally and sometimes people, you know, uh, have a relative or a friend that's experienced that. Yes. They are rare. It's very not, rare. We don't want to overstate the risk at all, but right. You know, it's, if there's a simple and expensive way to protect yourself, Absolutely. why wouldn't you do it? And I think that one thing you can always um, keep in mind is just using your intuition. If you go to a salon that you don't feel is is cleanly, uh, the cleanliness is maybe a, an issue that you're concerned about. Um, I think that that's use your intuition in that respect. And I think that with some of the new laws, many of the salons do have to sterilize. Um, a lot of their equipment and, and they have to use certain types of disinfecting products in their foot tubs and foot soaks and whirlpool baths and things like that. So I, I think that it's important to use your intuition, but I do think that uh, infections are very, very rare. And I think that if you have an open sore or open wound, of course, that's not the appropriate time to go to get your get right. your pedicures and uh and i think that uh just just keeping a watchful eye out i think you'll enjoy the experience and not have a problem yeah, and a lot of the the cuts or are open uh sores in the feet are very small they're very sometimes hard to detect exactly so you exactly. don't really know um with the holidays of course brings cold weather and outdoor activities of all kinds from you know attending a bears game mm -hmm. um and uh being outside tailgating for um, a couple hours before the game, being at the game, and then perhaps tailgating afterwards. So you're talking about a six to eight hour outdoor experience unabated by really any kind of warming up um, to outdoor activities like hockey and skiing and ice, ice skating, skating and things sure, like that. Sure. Um, so talk a little bit about some of the ways people can protect themselves and have an enjoyable experience of those kinds of activities. Um, and just take them one at a time if you want, especially the because they're they're vastly different, of course. So. Sure, sure. Well, again, if just going back to the shopping for a minute, if you are going to be outside doing a lot of shopping, depending on what the weather is like, you definitely want to make sure that you're wearing the appropriate shoe gear and socks. If it's very wet and slushy and rainy and snowy, <coughs> uh, certainly want to think about wearing a, a, water, a waterproof type boot. Um, uh, <coughs> I suggest wool socks to a lot of my patients because wool tends to keep you very dry and very warm. But there are are definitely other 
products on the market, different types of socks and sock liners that you can get that can also protect your feet and, and keep them warm. Um, the same What's thing. What's a sock liner made out of? Well, what there's different different types of materials. I'm not sure the exact um, material in, in specific to that, but there are different. Um, sometimes in the running shops, they carry different sock liners that are very very thin that you can put underneath the sock, mm. so you can have a two layer type of system. Okay. Um, and and sometimes we see foot and hand warmers that they sell at some of the shops that you can put inside your boot or put inside mm. your ski boot. Uh, but we, it's important to make sure that you use those very carefully. If you have any problems with feeling in your feet, if you're diabetic and you put something that has that you kind of a crack the pack open and then yeah. it, it increases the warmth, just be very careful with putting it inside a boot or stepping on it because it might get too hot if you don't have good feeling mm. in your feet. But there are hand warmers and foot warmers out there and, and I think socks are very important. Um, certainly something like um, going to a Bears game, uh, being outside, especially with the wind, mm -hmm. uh, that can actually increase the, the uh, wind chill factor. Mm -hmm. And um, Good boots and good, nice, so nice warm socks is very important. And um, certainly, if there's any numbness or tingling or pins and needles in your feet, uh, that may be a sign that there's some changes going on with the circulation and, and maybe an early start to some frostbite. So be very careful about that, especially if you've had previous frostbite exposures, you know, either those, as a kid or as an adult. How long do those warm packs usually last? You know, I think there's different ones on the market. They might last up to an hour or two. Um, they're usually a little plastic packet you can put inside your glove or, mm -hmm. or, um, or put inside your ski boot and kind of on the side. So it might be warm for a couple of hours, even up to three or four or five hours. So it, I think a lot of skiers use it and mm -hmm. certainly probably other people who work outside and such. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And we also talked about some, that, that was certainly not a, an outdoor sport for most of us anyway. Right. Although a lot of people treat it that way. Um, but the actual uh, sports, skiing, ice skating, uh, hockey, things like that. Yes. Um, sledding, mm -hmm. um, snowmobiling, Especially with your like kids. That. You have to be careful with your kids. They sometimes are outside for hours at a time and not really paying attention. And I think that just be careful um, with uh, kind of monitoring their outdoor you know, activities and making sure that they're in the right shoes and boots and such. Because sometimes they get so carried away having fun, they kind of forget about thinking about their toes and their feet. And they start getting a little frostbite. And we don't want that. So. And most kids have cotton socks. Exactly. And they'll get mm -hmm. wet and cotton will stay wet. And sometimes a wet sock will potentially freeze. Mm -hmm. And that's not a good thing. So um, so either have your kids come in periodically and change out boots or shoes or socks. That's a, that's a good way to do it. Um, or just really, you know, kind of keep an eye on, on what they're wearing when they're outside or, or you know, for really for any, any outdoor sport. Now, we're used to sort of a running shoe, which is kind of a... You know, a mesh. leather and mat, mesh and rubber kind of mm -hmm. thing. But an ice skate is uh, usually with leather. Mm -hmm. um, and a, a skiing boot is perhaps a mixture of uh, sort plastics of plastics and, plastics yeah. and stuff. What, do, the, do the makeup of those kinds of shoes or boots affect what's going to happen to your foot at all? I mean, are those like little... E easy bake ovens for the feet, so to speak. Uh, you know, sometimes I think that the the new manufacturing of ski boots they do have liners in them, um, and uh, even with ice skates, a lot of times you can't put a very heavy, thick sock in an ice skate, especially if you're playing hockey. A lot of hockey players will wear a very thin sock, or, or ice skaters might wear a very thin hmm. stocking or sock. So I do think that the leather may protect you a little bit better than a mesh or a real, you know, open shoe. But I I, I still think you have to be careful when you're out in the elements for a long time, especially if you're gonna be ice skating outdoors. Mm -hmm. um, so just kind of be careful about that. And for the people that, you know, can't get outside, whether they're, uh, they're not interested in those kinds of sports or they're just not that active, mm -hmm. um, what would you recommend for them during the winter? Well, again, I think if you're going to be walking to and from work or you're going to be out and about doing some errands, again, just I think it's so important to keep an eye on uh, the appropriate shoes when, when, the, when it gets very slippery and wet and, and uh, slushy out. Just make sure that there's appropriate sole on the, sh on the uh, bottom of the boot. Um, typically, a rubber sole that has more of a kind of a cutout to it is going to help to protect you from slipping. Mm -hmm. uh, and slipping and falling is unfortunately inevitable in the, in the wintertime here, especially in Chicago. We have a lot of ice and snow. And so it's, it's very important for all of our, pa all of our patients and um, uh, people of Chicago to be careful, especially when you're a little bit older, you know, kind of going out and about in the, in the cold weather and, and such like that. So just good shoes with a good non-slip sole, I think, is very important um, to, to consider, especially for some of our older, older patients.